Today's message was a hard one for me. Remembering loved ones. I remember some of my loved ones, my grandfathers. So it made it tough for me to bring up some memories of their loss. They showed me a lot in life. My one grandfather, McDaniel, he was a carpenter. He showed me how to build things. He taught me the way to be disciplined and to be exact and to be precise in what you're building. And he said to use that same philosophy in life, to be persistent in what you're doing. And I know this summer I built a deck out back of the house and I used Grandpa's level. So I all the time had that memory, that hard one, remembering that loved one with every board I leveled. Then I thought about my grandfather, Samson. Let's see, he was a fisherman. He taught me how to fish. And I remember the very first time we went out going fishing that I can remember. I was about eight years old. And we got to the end of Grandpa's dock. And he wrapped this rope around my waist and he tied it off to the pillar of the dock. I said, what for? He said, so the fish don't pull you in, son. I thought, Grandpa, you were giving me a line of story. Three hours later... I almost got pulled in. I caught an eight-foot pike. And he said, see, I told you so, son. We have dinner and breakfast for tomorrow. <laughs> and that's the way Grandpa was. But he taught me the technique on how to fish. Asked my son. I'm still teaching him. How many times have we gone out that he's caught zero and Dad's caught many or you caught one and I caught a bunch. And I, I'll give a story of one time of that fishing, this experience. See, this is a memory my grandfather got me. He taught me how to fish a certain way. I took my son out fishing. We were out at Mesker's Pier, and he was so excited. Dad, I got 26 fish to your zip. And I said, we still had a half hour to go, didn't we? Dad walked away with 28 or 26, yeah, 28, and he had 26. You see, there's a way of fishing. I allowed him that moment, that's what my grandfather would do, to teach me that sometimes in life we may get ahead on things, but we can't always be perfect. We can't always be winning. We cannot always be the one. There's times in our lives we need to take second place. As I stand here before you, I take second to Jesus Christ. I never want to be number one at this position because I still learn from Jesus Christ every day. And every day I have that grief of my loved ones. I have the grief that Jesus isn't here with us physically. But spiritually, he is here in my body, living in me today, living in each and every one of you. And I know throughout our scriptures, it tells us of all different kinds of grief that we have. Various kinds of grief. David cried when his son was, was, had passed away. Jesus cried when his best friend Lazarus was dead. They grieved. So it's okay to grieve. But then we should have that joy that comes after a while of grieving. Is that the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he rised. We can too. We will. Isn't that great news? So we should be happy for those loved ones, for the saints who have gone before us. There's no more pain, no more anxiety, just pure love. Pure love. I'd like to tell you a story about a, a, a friend named Mary I had that, well, Mary was an older person, our experienced senior youth, how's that sound? And she, had, she loved going to her Bible study class, but at times she couldn't understand all the things in this Bible study. But there was this 
a few years younger, just an adult youth, not adult senior youth, uh, knew a little bit more and was able to relate the stories to Mary. Especially when Mary had a hard time with something. So her and Barb connected. And Barb told her every time what, what the story meant, what the things they're talking about. And Mary and her grew this special relationship for a couple of years. Until one January when we found out that Barb had terminal brain cancer. Said she was only given two months to live. Mary was very upset. She didn't know what to do. Barb passed away. All Saints Sunday came, and Mary said, I have to help. I want to help in the service. You see, Mary's church and Barb's church was a different. What they did is they not only celebrated the passing of the saints, but they also celebrated the saints amongst them. For somebody who showed them that way, that living saint. And Mary was always praying for the living saint in Barb. But now she had to pray differently. So she asked to help with the service. As Mary stood up there like I did and lit the candles as the names were read. When it came to Barb's name. Mary looked and slowly lit the candle closest to her and was praying that she missed her friend, Barb. The candle lit up and a big flame just went high. And the warmth from the flame, Mary felt it and she could feel that spirit of God in that candle. That Mary was there with her. And that Mary will be with her all her life. Not only did that church celebrate it with Mary, but they all felt it. And from that point on, the church really celebrated the living saints and the passing saints. That's exciting to me to know that we have that. I have plenty of saints sitting right out here. And I know many of saints has gone before me. I'll grieve. I'll mourn. But then I stand and rejoice in the fact that they've gone somewhere else. Somewhere happy. Somewhere peaceful. And that that spirit will be there to offer us comfort comfort here today the spirits in our house it's here today with us our saints are sitting in the front pew today can you feel their presence i know you know their memories you should feel their love so on this all saints day as a christian one who loves jesus christ with all your heart and all your mind I know you will have painful moments when a saint passed, but remember the important part that we are resurrection people, that we will rise to a new life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.